Hello everyone. I wanted to show you guys a generator that I stumbled upon that appears to be almost identical to a Honda EU3000. Um, but the difference is this generator was modified to run on 36 volts DC or 48 volts DC uh, with a 1% uh, tolerance. I believe what these were used for uh, was the telecom industry, uh, possibly recharging batteries and or at cell towers uh, would be my guess. Uh, the reason I'm bringing this up is because I found a way to use this generator uh, for a much cheaper cost than buying a Honda EU3000. Now, I will tell you, if you buy one of these brand new from looks like AlphaGen, they run $27.99. That's right, $2,799. However, if you can find them used on Craigslist, uh, which I did in this case, or right now on eBay, there has been a seller selling these for $300 or best offer, and you have to pay shipping, which varies depending on how far you live away, but I believe the dealer was based in Georgia. So if you're within driving distance of Georgia, um, this would be a very good deal for you, considering he's asking $300 or best offer plus shipping. I don't know if he allows local pickup or not, but nonetheless, I was reading about these, and in the manual, um, you can force output on these. So long as the... Uh, battery sensing it can sense at least two volts so I don't have 36 volts uh, batteries I don't have 48 volt batteries <clears throat> what I do have here is a 12 volt battery only purpose of the 12 volt battery is so that I can get that output sensor there to start generating power it will not generate power unless it sees at least um, two volts <clears throat> DC here so, what I did and what I thought a proof of concept would be, well, what if I bought a 48-volt inverter and didn't use any batteries, would this thing work? Uh, meaning, could I just take an inverter like this and plug it right into this thing and generate AC voltage? Because that's ultimately what I was trying to do. I don't need 36 volts DC. I don't need 48 volts DC. I need 128 volts DC. I'm sorry, 120 volts AC. So one advantage that I see over this, over an EU3000, is that if the inverter fried on an EU3000, you'd be buying a, a very expensive inverter. If something happens to this inverter, because it's external, I just buy a new inverter. Right? So if I bought two external inverters and used them with this generator, if one of them went out, I could still use the other. You know, say I bought two 1500-watt inverters, uh, one of them would be good and one of them would need to get fixed or replaced. So the cost would be much cheaper replacing an external inverter as opposed to the Honda EU3000's internal inverter. With that said, if something happened to the DC output on this particular generator, I would be um, up the creek. So, you know, that caveat said, you know, I'm just basing the internal inverter of the EU3000 versus having these external inverters. Now, I only bought one. This is a 1500 watt uh, Ames. It's a uh, pure sine wave inverter. And I always buy pure sine wave inverters and I know a lot of people like the modifieds because they're cheaper and they do most of the work that a, a pure sine wave would do. But for me, I like the pure sine wave because it simulates the uh, what true power is from your power company anyway. But um, <clears throat> what you can see here is, I don't know if you can see it, but it is you know DC 48 volts in. There's the positive and negative. And on the front, there's your typical 128 volt. I'm sorry, well, I keep saying 128. Your typical 128, 120 volt outlet. So what we're going to do here is we're going to run a few tests. We're going to 
uh, plug a light into it, which is about 450 watts, and then we're going to try to plug in a heater, which is close to 1500 watts. Um, and we're going to see what happens and if this generator can even um, do is what I'm proposing um, without having batteries. Now, again, the purpose of this generator really was to recharge um, batteries, you know, 36 volt battery bank or a 48 volt battery bank. Again, I don't have any of that. I'm only using this battery to bootstrap the forced output process of this generator. So enough of me talking. Let's go ahead and give it a run. I would show you the inside of it, uh, but it is it is really a Honda EU3000. The frame's the same. Everything is identical on this thing. Um, I just want to do a walk around real quick. Now, it is cold out here today. It's probably 30-some degrees, but we're going to go ahead and uh, try to get it started here with the choke and see what happens. Okay, and I should be able to talk over this thing because it's a pretty quiet generator. I'm gonna give it a try to hold this and start this at the same time, so bear with me. Second pole, 30 degrees, not bad. Choke's on. Okay, I'm gonna shut the choke off. I think, um, not sure if the 3000 <laughs> has the uh, feature like the 2000 does where you can it has an eco mode switch on it this particular generator always seems to be an eco mode uh, the uh, eco mode and it increases as the wattage is demanded now if you look on here notice there's no voltage okay that voltage there's there's nothing the red bar is to the extreme left Okay, now notice also there's no lights on. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to hook up the two leads. This is going to be a bit tricky. I'm going to hook up these two. To, it's going to be a bit tricky trying to hold this. Now, this side's positive, this side's negative. So I'm going to trace the negative and I'm going to try hooking it up here. I'm going to try to do this with one hand, which is going to make it hard. But we'll see what happens. Okay, now I have the positive in my hand. Now, when I hit this here, the generator should go into an overload alarm. That light should come on when I hit this. So I'm just going to switch hands here. And see if I can show us to uh, hit this. Okay, so what I'm doing is I'm going down here and I'm going to touch this, and this light should come on. Okay, now it comes on. Now, forced output mode, you have to hold this button in for five seconds. Then this light's gonna go out, then you have to hold it in for another five seconds, then the voltage is gonna come into play. So I'm gonna try doing this with one hand. So I'm gonna push this button in. One, two, three, four, five. Okay, light went out. Now I'm gonna push it in again. One, two, three, four, five. Okay. Now, you heard it kick up. The generator started to kick up because it, it was trying to start the battery. Now, notice, I have this off. I only have the negative on there. But notice the output now. 52, 53 volts, which is great. DC, it's exactly what we want for this converter. So I just need to be really careful here right now when I'm hooking this up because it's now in live output mode. So I'm working with the green wire first because I got that in my hand, and that's the positive. So over here, I'm gonna try to hook this up with one hand, and I probably shouldn't be doing this, but actually I don't think I can do it with one hand. What I'm gonna do is just put this on and mount real quick. I'm just hooking up positive. 
for the positive here. And again, this is just a temporary install. It's just for a test. I know this isn't perfect, this is not ideal. I'm gonna take the negative. My hands are freezing. Okay, you always get that spark when you first hook up to a DC inverter. It's a tad bit scary. Okay, so I'm gonna pick the phone back up here. Okay, as I touch the phone, it shut it off, but basically have my two connections now we're staring at the front of the inverter so I'm gonna go ahead and turn the inverter on and we'll see if it'll even power up okay inverter powered up fine now I'm gonna go ahead and hit the fuse switch and then we're gonna look at the output on the kilowatt so I hit the fuse switch, and we get 121 volts, 60 hertz, not really any watts because we don't have anything plugged into it yet. Just trying to get this all on the same screen for you so you can see what I'm doing here. So basically, notice the battery's not even in the picture because we don't need it. We just needed to bootstrap it, okay? Not even playing. So right here, to the inverter, and the inverter's going into this surge strip, and I got a kilowatt on it. So, what we're going to do is plug this light here <clears throat> into it, and we're going to see what happens. It's about a 400 watt light, I think. Okay, so what happened... So what happened right there was because there's no battery to take that initial hit of the surge, it jet the uh, inverter turned off for a brief second, then turned back on. But if you look, the lights on, 120 volts, 430 watts. And it's all being powered from that generator. And notice with 400 watts, the generator really didn't even go up that high. Fitting the, uh, it, it did not increase that much because 400 watts is really not that much on a 2800 watt inverter. I'm sorry, 2800 watt generator. But the proof of concept is once you initially get your device hooked up, it will work. What I'm going to do now is try this uh, 1500 watt uh, portable heater. Now, I suspect the same thing that's going to happen is it's going to turn off until the generator kicks up enough voltage, then it's going to come on. So, we're going to unplug this. Okay, so that's unplugged. This is off. We're gonna plug the heater in and try to get it on the same screen for you here. It's kind of hard to do, but okay. So I'm gonna turn the fan on only, which uses hardly anything. You can see the fan's using 24 watts. Okay, now we're gonna turn it on low, which is about 750 watts. The generator should actually make some more noise. Be more of a strain on the generator, because 700 watts is pretty good. So let's go ahead and hit it up. Now, like I said, it's probably gonna shut off. It may or may not, but I think it will. Oh. Okay, if you heard, there it goes. So you can hear the generator kicked up definitely up in RPMs and we'll go back to this and we're going to go back to the watts so you can see we're 
using 900 watts and heat is definitely coming out of here. So just to show you, volts 120, the hertz is at 60, and the watts is 900. And the generator is definitely making uh, more noise because it's more of a demand on it. Now, we're gonna go up to 1500, which may or may not shut this off again. We'll take, ready, here it goes. It actually did not shut off that time because I'm guessing it was under a good load already. So now, we're up to 1367, almost 1400 watts. Getting some nice heat out of here, which is actually nice because it's so cold out. And keep in mind, this is a 1500 watt inverter. So we're almost at 1400. I'm not gonna plug the light in. I don't wanna take a chance of blowing anything up by trying to go over the wattage of that uh, inverter. But what I just proved here is that I can get this generator work, which is a couple hundred dollars, buy an inverter for a couple hundred dollars, as opposed to going out and buying a brand new Honda EU3000. Now, this is a full start only. I noticed that these Alpha Gens do not come with an electric start. It's full start only, but again, you saw it start up with one or two pulls. So, again, uh, this would be a great way if someone's looking for a really good generator and they want themselves uh, be able to control their inverters, they don't have to worry about the Hondas blowing out. They can just buy something similar to this and buy their own inverters and they generate their own electricity. So I hope this helps.